Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Justin with Excel Smith. On this episode of Foundations, we're reviewing 10 essential keyboard shortcuts. Having to constantly reach for that mouse can really slow down your productivity. And let's face it, we're being asked to do more with our time, not less. The shortcuts in this video will help you speed through those spreadsheets. Let's get started. See, that was a race car sound because like race cars are fast and keyboard shortcuts are fast and it works, right? To demonstrate our different keyboard shortcuts, we'll use two worksheets worth of a simple mock report. Each report contains a few identification columns as well as a few columns of data along with some blank cells. One of the most common keyboard shortcuts I use is to delete cells, rows, or columns. We can clear a value by selecting it and pressing backspace on a PC or delete on a Mac. While this does get rid of the value, it doesn't delete the cell. Let's delete cell E16 and see the available options. After selecting E16, press Ctrl and minus on a PC or Command and minus on a Mac. Instead of simply clearing the contents, we now have the option to either move the cells to the right of E16 to the left, move the cells below E16 up, delete the entire row, shifting all of the below rows up by one, or delete the entire column which moves all of the columns to the right over to the left. These options also work if we delete a range of cells. Let's select cells D16 through F16 and press the delete keyboard shortcut. Let's press cancel. If we select an entire row or column, Excel doesn't give us the option menu. It simply removes that row or column and adjusts the following rows or columns accordingly. Excel provides greater power to your data if we convert it to a table. To do this with a mouse, we would select a cell within our data range, select Insert from the ribbon, and press Table. A much quicker way is to start by selecting a cell within our data range like before. However, instead of navigating multiple menus with the mouse, we can simply press Ctrl T on a PC or Command and T on a Mac. A quick press of the Enter key and we have a table with row 4 as the headers. There are many times I want to paste just the values. This could be because I'm replacing a system taxing equation with its results, or I have formatted my cells and I just need the data without changing the formatting. The long way is to first copy a cell, then select Home in the ribbon followed by the dropdown next to Paste. The quicker way is to use the keyboard shortcut Tied to paste special. Let's copy cell B2. Next, select cell B3 and press Ctrl, Alt, and V on a PC or Ctrl, Command, V on a Mac. This brings up the complete paste special dialog box which includes the useful operation section. For more information about the operation section, check out this quick take video. I'll also include a link in the description below. For our purposes, we want to paste values. We could use the mouse to select the values radio button, but that wouldn't be very keyboard short cuttery, short cutty, short cuttiness, what, whatever the word is, we can use values by simply pressing the V key. Pressing enter, we get sheet one without any of the formatting. Selecting entire rows or columns is useful when we need to update the formatting or if we want to quickly remove the row or column by using the delete keyboard shortcut we reviewed earlier. Instead of clicking on the row number across the left or the column letter across the top, we can select an entire row by pressing Shift and Spacebar on either Mac or PC. Holding Shift and using the up or down arrow keys allows us to add to our selection. To select an entire column, press Ctrl and Spacebar on either Mac or PC. Again, we can hold Shift and use the left and right arrow keys to add to our selection. The Home option on the ribbon has many great formatting options. A lot of these options can be found in the Format Cells dialog box. To access this menu, select the cells you want to format and press Ctrl and 1 on a PC or Command and 1 on a Mac. From this pop-up, we can use the tab and arrow keys to move between the different panes and their options. Let's update the formatting for cell F8. 
After selecting cell F8, press either Ctrl and 1 on a PC or Command and 1 on a Mac. Let's first update the category. Press Tab to activate the category list. Hit the down arrow key to go to currency. Let's update the decimal places by pressing Tab. We can then hit the up arrow key twice to ensure our value has two decimal places. Next, let's change the alignment. We can press Tab to cycle forward until we see number is highlighted. Alternatively, we can press Shift and Tab to cycle backwards. This is the faster method from the decimal places box. Hit the right arrow to go to alignment. To select the alignment option, press the spacebar. We'll center align our text by pressing the spacebar with the horizontal alignment field active. Press the down arrow key twice to highlight center. We can then press spacebar to make the selection. Lastly, let's change the color. Press Shift and Tab to go back to the section selector. Press the right arrow once followed by spacebar to select the font section. Press Tab until the color dropdown becomes active, and then press the spacebar. We can then use the arrow keys to navigate through the colors, pressing spacebar once we've selected the color we want. Once you've made all of your modifications, press Enter to submit the changes and close the dialog box. We can see our value in cell F8 has been updated. It might be more practical to use the mouse if you're making this many changes. However, I wanted to show what's possible because the keyboard may be faster depending on what needs to be changed in this menu. If you want to switch worksheets, you could reach for that mouse and drag it to the bottom of your workbook. Or you could use a keyboard shortcut. On a PC, press Ctrl and Page Up to move to the right one worksheet, or Ctrl and Page Down to move to the left one worksheet. On a Mac, press Option and the left or right arrow. One of the most common tasks I perform is going to the end of a range within a row or column. Using the mouse is easy enough with a small data set like we have here, but this can be a pain when working with lots of rows or columns. To navigate to the next break in your data, press Ctrl and the arrow keys on a PC, or Command and the arrow keys on a Mac. If you want to select the entire range instead of simply navigating to the end, you can hold Shift in addition to the other keys. One callout, this shortcut navigates to the next break in your data. For example, if we select cell C5 and press Ctrl, Shift, and Down arrow on a PC, or Command, Shift, and the Down arrow on a Mac, we'll select the entire column of data. However, if we do the same thing starting with cell F5, our selection will stop at cell F14 because cell F15 is empty. To add to our selection, press the down arrow key again while holding either Control and Shift or Command and Shift. To add additional columns to our selection, we can press either the left or right arrow keys while continuing to hold Shift. To add all of the columns to the left, press the left arrow key while holding Control and Shift on a PC or Command and Shift on a Mac. The previous keyboard shortcut is great for navigating to a break within a row or column. Sometimes we need to navigate to the very end or beginning of our data. To go to the bottom right cell of our data, press Ctrl and End on a PC or Ctrl, Function, and Right Arrow on a Mac. Like the previous example, we can add Shift to our keyboard shortcut to select the range. To navigate to cell A1, press Ctrl and Home on a PC or Ctrl, Function, and Left Arrow on a Mac. Again, add Shift to select the entire range. We can use the arrow keys while holding Shift to refine our selection. Locking cell references while entering formulas is incredibly common. However, having to use the mouse to insert the dollar signs in our equation can be a major time suck. Fortunately, we can press F4 on a PC or Command and T on a Mac while entering the equation. Pressing F4 or Command T immediately after a cell or range will lock both the column and row for the cell or both sides of the range. We can keep pressing F4 or Command T to cycle through the different locking options. The first press locks both the row and the column. A second press locks just the row. Pressing F4 or Command T a third time locks just the column. And a fourth press removes the cell reference locking.
We made it to the last item on our list of top 10 keyboard shortcuts. It's been an exciting journey, but all good things must come to an end. The final keyboard shortcut in this list allows us to quickly add filters to our data. The long way is to select Sort and Filter from the ribbon, followed by Filter. A faster way is to press Ctrl, Shift, and L on a PC, or Command, Shift, and F on a Mac. Like with the ribbon option, we can add filters to our dataset from anywhere within our dataset. Say you currently have cell D13 selected and you want filters. No problem, just press Ctrl, Shift, and L on a PC, or Command, Shift, and F on a Mac, and filters will be automatically applied to your header row. If you want to turn off the filters, simply press the keyboard shortcut again. If I need to clear my filters, I'll press the keyboard shortcut twice rather than using the clear function in the sort and filter option in the ribbon. The first press removes the filter, which also clears it. The second press turns the filter back on, but without any filtering applied. The trick for this one is to make sure you have just a single cell selected before adding the filters. If you have multiple cells selected, either option, keyboard shortcut or ribbon, will add filters to the top row of your selection. I hope these shortcuts help increase your Excel productivity. If you found this video helpful, give those like and subscribe buttons a press. If you want something to do with all that free time you'll have by using these keyboard shortcuts, watch that video to learn even more about Excel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.